Hi everyone, Diane here, welcome to my studio. Uh, I apologise in advance for any noise of rain that may intrude on this video. It's uh, quite likely to pour again in a minute. It's just stopped right now. Um, we're having more rain this winter than ever. Um, it's always wet here in Brittany in the winter, but this year it's outdoing itself. Anyway, what today I'm going to do is a little bit of an abstract just to relax with. And um, I'm going to use my um, Kuretake Art Nouveau set. And the reason for that is because I haven't used it for a while. And the second reason for that is because it has such a lovely range of pinks. And I'm going to base this, uh, this painting on sort of pink tones. We'll see what happens. I'm also going to use kind of a little bit of a mixed media approach. This is not going to be a serious art uh, endeavor. This is not anything uh, precious or in any way, you know, um, um, yes, not like that. But I am going to use perhaps some sepia ink. This is by Sennelier. It's a good um, drawing ink. And to apply that, I might use a dip pen. This is from Speedball. Um, not expensive at all. The, um, the nibs come out, although this one seems to have welded itself in. It comes with a selection. You probably need to use a pair of pliers to get that out now. Um, or a bamboo dip pen like this from China. They also use these. Here comes the rain. They also use these for scoring into pottery when they're doing um, scruffy, scruffito or scruffiti or whatever it's called. Um, or a stick if you haven't got, <coughs> excuse me, if you haven't got a pen or a dip stick, just use a stick from the garden. This is my favourite stick. Um, he's been with me for quite a while and um, he's getting a little bit bent now and old like my husband, but um, I still keep him because he's useful. So there we are. And then I have a gold pen. This is Sigma gel pen in gold and I have an Artistro, um, extra fine although it isn't, a uh, paint pen, um, which sometimes works. You never know. Your luck. Um, might as well use this really. This is a buzzard's feather and if you um, if you wanted to you could use the um, end of the quill there to paint with. That would be fun, wouldn't it? I might even do that. Then I've got as well my craft mode brushes. Um, I've got five of them here. I don't know where the other one's gone. The one that is missing is the thinnest, that is to say the size four, um, something like a rigger. I don't know where that's gone. Gone on holiday, I think, probably. Doesn't matter. Anyway, because I won't be using that at the moment. I've got number nine, number 14. Um, this is a three quarter inch cat's tongue. This is a one inch flat, and this is a uh, half inch mop. I'm not sure if I'm going to use those yet, but I thought I would just reintroduce them to you because they are on sale on the Craft Mo's page and they will be releasing them to the general, uh, everyone who's bought one. Um, what's that? That's, um, that is, um, what is that? blue tack. There we go. Just goes to show these are nice and easy to clean. If that was on one of these brushes with this matte finish, I'm not sure it would be that easy to get off. Those are good though, those aqua mute brushes. Not, not bad at all. Okay, so let's begin. I'm thinking I might use a bigger piece of paper. That is a bit small. That'll do. I do like the Meaden paper. Don't have a problem with that. 100% cotton, cold press, acid free, all the rest of it. But today I'm going to use this. This is a piece of arches. It says A on it there. So if I'm going to use that, I need a board of some sort. When you do this, you feel like you're actually doing proper painting. You know what I mean? When you do, um, when you take a piece of paper like this and you stick it down, you think, oh, I'm doing a proper painting. Not like when you just paint in a sketchbook or something. 
Washi tape, of course, lifts the mood and makes you realise actually it isn't a proper painting because if it was a proper painting, what you would do is you would stretch your paper and use brown tape to stick it down. I've got a video on that somewhere and there are others, plenty of others on YouTube showing you how to do that, but this is a sort of semi-proper painting. A lot of people use that word to describe the English. You know, I think um, I've been told, I was told when I lived in Canada, oh, you know, the English, they're so proper. And I'm like, yeah, no, wrong. And anyone who's listening to me who's English will know what I mean when I say, yeah, no, wrong. Um, so let's begin. Shall I sit down or shall I stand to do this? Which brush should I use? Shall I use this one? I don't know. Yes, I will. I like to go with my first impulse, always. Which doesn't always work out, but anyway, let's see. Um, what I think I'll do is just literally paint some shapes and not worry too much about anything. I'm going to probably talk random rubbish. This is a very rewarding way of spending half an hour when you know you really ought to be doing something else. Um, I just suddenly remembered that I had to fed, feed the pig and any minute now I'm gonna have to um, cook lunch. Quite nice to go to the edge or, you know, kind of go over the edge a little bit. I'm a bit obsessed with eggs at the moment, as you can see. Um, I'm going to try not to do too many of those. Let's do some circles. We're getting some very nice eggs at the moment. A friend of ours gave us three hens that they didn't want to keep anymore and they're actually laying, which is nice. Now I'm just relying on the um, colour sense of Kiritaki here and I'm going down down the row of paints that I've got here. I hope you can see those, yes, yes you can. I'm not going to name them because I don't know what they're called, um, but I'm just going to go down here like that. And perhaps maybe as I get further down, go into purples and things. And I'm going to leave a bit of space around a little bit, so make this into a sort of uh, you know, there's room here to do other things if you want, if you wanted to. So that's that's where we're at now. Maybe I will put a beige object down here. There are no rules when it comes to this. As far as I'm concerned, there aren't anyway. I was watching something the other day. I came across a video by a lady who was talking about beginning to paint and she was saying that in order to paint, she has to have rules. I couldn't be further away from there. I, I, I don't even know what that means. Um, right, so we will let that run and dry. If you wanted to, if you want to make more texture, you can just touch the paint with, while it's still wet, you can touch it with drops of water, clean water preferably, more or less clean, and it will push the pigment away so you'll get some interesting um, movement in your underlayer. So now we have to choose whether to just let it dry. See, see what I mean? It depends on the pigment, how much it moves, and it depends how much pigment you've put on and how much water you've put in, but it will um, definitely do something. So there we are, that's that. And I am going to dry that now. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare a fabulous online learning platform which offers a huge range of professional videos to help you whatever it is you want to learn.
This month, we're focusing on the artist, teacher, and community builder, Jamie Smith. Jamie understands the needs of an artist who wants to turn a hobby into an additional income stream and potentially a life-changing, thriving business. In this video, she goes through the process of preparing a business plan, which is the vital first step in starting up a successful business. But Jamie has a unique approach, and I'll let you find out what that is when you visit her course, which you can do when you sign up for a free month on Skillshare. Details for how to do this are in the description below the video, and the first 500 people to sign up will get a month free. As well as this course, Skillshare has thousands of other videos covering every possible need and a very good selection of courses for every aspect of starting and running an online business. From the initial business plan through social media, video editing, how to sell on Etsy and much, much more, they've got you covered. So don't hesitate, give it a try now. And now back to our painting for today. So that's dry, and if I can open this bottle of ink, whoops, <laughs> sometimes dries a bit, doesn't it? That's not important. Um, if I can open the bottle of ink. Now, one way you can use this is you can actually, if you want, um, draw directly with the, um, the with this. And I think you could get some quite nice, loose, squiggly lines if that was what you wanted. So we could we could try that, couldn't we? Why don't we try that? I think what I want to do is to put a sort of line here, and then I'm going to do my my leaves. Where it goes thick like that, First of all, you can pick it up a little bit, but where it does that, that's where I'm squeezing slightly, you know? And I'll just put that down and come back here. And because um, if you squeeze, you can fill your pipette. It's like giving medicine, you know? Um, but if you squeeze a little bit while it's going onto the paper, have to be careful not to do too much, otherwise you end up with a great big blob, which may yet happen. But that's a lovely, a lovely textured effect, and we can come into that in a minute with other adornments. You could use a pen if you wanted to. Okay, so that's our kind of skeleton that's going to structure this painting. It's not the first time I've used sepia ink. Uh, no, it's not the first time I've used a branch to give me some, you know, movement. And then what shall we do next? Uh, it's got to dry a little bit and then we can work into that a bit. Although you could, while it's wet, if you wanted to, something that we could do is we could just try to scratch in there a little bit. I don't know if that will work. It probably would work better on the smoother paper, that. This pen is too, too scritchy, really. So I'm not going, to, not going to do that, that's not going to work. So let me think, what shall we do? I think I'm going to do some patterns up here. You know, it's the time-honoured thing, isn't it? Uh, what brush shall I use? I think I might use, what shall I use? The thing is, with, the, um, with these brushes, although they seem long and the hairs are long and they seem uncontrollable, the benefit of them is that they, they hold a lot of um, paint. So they go on for ages. So when you start to paint, well, it's still wet. That's okay, that's fun. When you start to paint with them, uh, you can just keep going. If you use a tiny brush, you have to keep on um, refilling it. But when you use a bigger brush with lots of hairs, longer hairs,
You don't have to keep refilling, not so often anyway. That's nice, I quite like this orangey colour. Oh, that's wet too. Um, so I have to be a little bit careful there. I wonder whether this would work. Hmm. Uh, right, I'm going to do some lines. Thick and thin. Pretend that's the edge of a spiral. And then if I mix some pink with that, You have no need to worry about what you are doing, just do it. And then as you touch the paper, it will say, oh, look, if you touch me here, I'll run so you can decide. I like that, don't you? Do some more of that. And see what I mean about how long the brush goes for? Probably far longer than you want. And then you sort of think, oh, I ought to um, use that colour again while I've still got it on my brush, because look, there's loads of it. That was just one fill, did all of that. My goodness, it's still going up here. We could do, we could fill this one up here with little pink lines. I haven't refilled my brush. I'm still going with the same colour that I picked up a minute ago. I think, haven't I, aren't I? Um, okay, now what, what shall we do next? Let's, um, I want to use up the rest of this paint. They're pressing quite hard now and beginning to get some dry brush. So we could do some dry brush here. It's a great way of practicing techniques. Dry brush, it's when your brush is running out of paint. And so you just go over the paper like that. And then you could, um, you could come into that with other colors and just emphasize edges. Something like that. Um, now what? Maybe, maybe we'll take this space and fill it. And we could put in some gold, big blobs of gold maybe. And maybe we'll put it down here. If you if you use a colour somewhere in a painting, then you should use it somewhere else. So we'll put these nice big gold splodges down there. That looks good, doesn't it? And then this is speaking to me now. So we'll go in here and put gold on there as well. And then maybe the other colour gold. And then obviously we have to have some concentric circles here. Okay, now what? Are we going to paint our leaves in gold? I think we might. Use a bit of dry brush there so it has some texture. All this dry, all this gold paint, we have to use it for something. It's only so many days to Christmas. And I was going to say when this um, drawing ink dries, if you've put it on thick, then it will, um, 
leave a kind of shiny, slightly raised effect, which is quite nice. So just a tiny bit of three dimensionality there. I'm just using this gold. This, this is the Kuretake gold from the main set. It's not in the um, Art Nouveau set. It's in the main set. So we're just painting all these leaves, making them a bit bigger, but not going over the the brown because not as, not much anywhere. Anywhere we can't help it. There we are. And you don't want to use too many colours. It's better to stick to texture. So repeat your colours, you know. And if you develop the texture, then you'll realise that you don't need millions of different colours. Oh, isn't that lovely where that's bled out there? Um, so we've got dots and lines and bigger dots and um, I'm probably not going to use the pens in this now because the way that this is developed, um, I'm thinking possibly not necessary. So I'm going to do some big thick lines and I've got my lovely um, dry brush effect there. Do a bit more here and not worried about going over in any way. Okay, I want to turn this round. Turn it round, sometimes you can see that you want to do something specific um, and so I'm just developing this and making it more pink to fill this space, so making it a bit like a brick wall. We've got quite a lot of videos on this kind of thing, um, but I think this one is probably a little bit more developed than some of the others, a lot simpler. Sometimes you just want little touches. So where we've got these spaces here, we'll just put tiny dots in. Maybe, you know, somewhere like this where the line, the color changes, you can put some more dots. And then we could put some up here. some close together, some further apart, all these variations. And then as you look at it, you're going to say, oh, but I desperately need another concentric spiral here to join all that. And then this needs a bit of pink. And I think that's probably going to be very close to nearly done. Yep, well, I think I'm going to call that done for the minute. Let's take off the tape. Not a, you know, it's not a Monet. It's not even a Picasso. It's just a nice bit of pretty art to while away the rainy days. 
and I shall put that in a frame when it's dry and show you what it looks like at the end of the video. So here we are for now. One painting. If you like what you've seen, don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on notifications. Consider joining us on Patreon, please, or else here on the membership for this YouTube channel. And um, on our website in return for membership, as well as all the other things, hang on a second. That was just my advent candle catching fire on the um, holly that it was standing on. Um, yes, we offer free sketch downloads of all the sketches of all the paintings that I've done that need a sketch. It's all free and uh, that's all over on the website and also on Patreon where if you're a member you can download videos and have instant access to the sketches for it with, at a stroke. So it's a really, really good system that um, Tamsin's put into place there. And I think if there's anything you need to know, leave a comment in the, in the comments below and ask your questions and I'll do my best to answer them. Um, and for the minute, I think that's all I have to say to you. And thank you very much for being here and wishing you a very happy holiday season as we go towards Christmas. So I'll say bye for now, everybody. Bye bye.